Thank you for tuning in to In The Mix with Sister Johnny. I am excited to be back on the air with all of you. Thank you so much for all of your support, for listening. And to all those that are listening for the very first time, I'd like to welcome you to In The Mix. If you'd like to catch up on some of the previous shows, please visit me at SisterJohnny.com. That's SisterJohnnie.com. Also, I have a YouTube channel. So if you want to subscribe to that YouTube channel, you can. Um, If not, I certainly understand it. But if you want to get the word there, you can as well. Amen. God bless all of you. Let's get into the word. Today, I'm going to be coming from Luke chapter 23, starting at verse 33. Amen. Luke 23, verse 33. And I'm going to read through 43, (laughs) all these three. And I'm going to be reading out of the Amplified today. And I know some people are like, well, Sister Johnny, you read out of different versions. And I do. My foundational Bible that I read from is the King James Version. But I read from different versions as um, just study tools to help me really understand the word of God. But also sometimes people are like with the King James Version, the wording and the language is sometimes a lot are too much for people. And so I'll tend to read out of a uh, another version that just kind of makes it plain and simple. Amen. So today I'm reading out of the Amplify because there's emphasis and points that I'm trying to extract from the scripture and the Amplify does it the best. So again, Amplify version, Luke chapter 23, starting at the 33rd verse. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right hand and one on the left. And Jesus was saying, Father, Forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots, dividing his clothes among themselves. Now the people stood by watching, but even the rulers ridiculed and sneered at him, saying, He saved others from death. Let him save himself if he is the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up to him and cruelly offering him sour wine and sarcastically saying, If you are really the king of the Jews, save yourself from death. Now there was also an inscription above him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who had been hanged on a cross beside him kept hurling abuse at him saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us from death. But the other one rebuked him saying, Do you not even fear? Fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? Are we suffering justly? Because we are getting what we deserve for what we have done. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he was saying, Jesus, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for those that are listening. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will use me for your glory. Holy Spirit, come and bring everything back to my remembrance that you will have me to teach on today. Lord, I thank you for those that are listening, that every ear and heart be open, not to me, but to your word. I give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus name. Amen. All right, so this scripture is is impacted. So we got to unpack. So what's going on here? The reason why I wanted to go here, number one, let me just break this down. The reason why I feel strongly that um, the Lord wanted me to go here is because, you know, sometimes things could be happening to you and it's unjust. It's not right. It's not fair. It's not that you did anything wrong. You know what I'm saying? You may be on your job. People may you know, as I would say in a corporate arena, you know, trying to throw you under the bus. People may be trying to throw you under the bus, saying things about you that's not right, doing things to you that's completely disrespectful, meaning it's not okay at your workplace. Or maybe you're at school and you have different students that are accusing you of different things. Or you may be on a, a young person on social media and then the young people are really cruel because they go to social media and they just blast folks, right? And I look at that as like the newspaper back in the day, social media, and they just blast you. And it's things that's not true about you. You know what I mean? Or, or wherever you may be in your social arenas and people are saying things or have done things to you that was unjustly, it was not right, right? How do you respond? That's the thing. Because, you know, I always try to tell people the way God uses me, 
Okay. I can't talk about other people, but the way God uses me is trying, is trying to be as transparent as I possibly can and keep it at a point where you can relate. I want to be able to not forget we're human. And a lot of times we get so spiritually minded that we're no earthly good. We live here on earth. And even though we are Christian believers and we're following after Christ and we are doing the best we know how as humanly possible to keep our the characteristics of God, sometimes, sometimes we get pressed and the human part of us just reacts. So when people have, have accused you of things that's unjustly, that's not right, what do you do? How do you respond? This is the question. And so here, Jesus is on the cross. Now you might say, well, Sister Johnny, now he on the cross. You kind of taking it to an extreme. I have to for a point that I'm trying to pull out. It says when they came to the place called the skull, listen to that, the skull, death. There they crucified him and the criminals. Now Jesus is being crucified with some criminals, with people that have actually committed crimes. But the reason why I wanted to, let me keep going because I'll get excited. It says one on the right and one on the left. So he's surrounded by people that uh, are criminals or people that have committed some heinous crimes. He's in the middle. He's in the midst of that. Okay. Get a visual. One on the right, one on the left. He in the middle. He in the middle of the criminals on the right and the left. And then it says, and Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And they cast lots. So he's praying for the people that are mocking there. You got people that's in front of him mocking him. You got the soldiers that's giving him sour wine while he, his vital organs is shutting down. Come on. And then you got these two criminals on the side and you in the middle of all that. The son of God, the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one of God. And yet in the middle of all that, Jesus is praying, forgive them for they don't know. They not understanding who I am. And so why am I extracting that? Because when you're on your job or you're at work or you're dealing with some confrontation or you're dealing with somebody where you about two seconds from going off, I want you to stop a few seconds before them seconds, you getting ready to go off and remember this scripture right here. Jesus is surrounded by haters. As Pastor Rilla would say, he's surrounded by some haters in the front in the back, on the side, while he's, his vital organs is shutting down. And in the midst of that, he's praying for them. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Look, when people are coming at you, and this is for my own self, this word be for me. Amen. When people are doing these things, you got to keep in mind, they don't know you. Back in the day, we used to be like, and they don't know me like that. So Jesus is saying, forgive them, Father. They don't know who I am. They don't really know who I am because if they have known, if they knew who Jesus really was, there's no way they would have even uttered their lips to say such a thing. They would have never said such a thing because they would have understood who Jesus was and who he is. Come on. But they had no understanding. They lacked it. And so Jesus had compassion for them even though they mocked him, they were giving him sour wine while he's on the cross dying. His vital organs is shutting down. You can't do that to somebody. If you study human anatomy and physiology, you need some water to help your cells to thrive and live and to help you and to quench the thirst. But anybody that knows that sour vinegar, that just draws up the water even more and sends you to death quicker. Come on now. So they're going to give him some sour wine. They're taunting him. Then there's an inscription there that reads King of the Jews, like taunting him. It's written in three different languages. Come on, so it ain't no confusion. Come on now. And they're saying these obscenities to Jesus. And then on the left and the right, there's criminals. There's criminals. And in the midst of this, Jesus is praying, Father, forgive them. They don't know me. They don't know me like that. They don't know who I am. God don't do nothing to them because they don't know. Come on now. That's what we have to do. When we get in these situations where we are at work or we're surrounded around people that are saying some crazy things, some crazy talk. To, I say the crazy talk, some crazy talk. And they're not understanding who we are as believers. You're a child of God. You're a child of the King. And, and I know a lot of times we say that, but it's almost like we say it 
and we've lost the, the true substance and meaning of what that is. When you say you're a child of God, what does that mean? I'm a child of God. What does that mean? I am a child of God. The great I am. He's the alpha. I say this all the time. He's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. There's no one above him. There's no one beneath him. This the, It's God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the most high God. There's no one above him. He's the God that created everything. Atoms, fungus. When you really think about matter and everything that's created in matter down to the atom, nothing can move in him. I move and have my being. I am a child of God. And for you can for you to talk to me like you're talking to me, I'ma pray for you. You see what I mean? You see how when you spin that? I'ma pray for you because you don't know who I am. That's your angle. That's your angle. When you're at work, when you're at school, when you're in the marketplace, when you're at church, wherever you're at, let me tell you something. When you say, I am a child of God, understand what that means. Jesus is on the cross getting ready to die in his physical body that he's never done before with the weight of humanity on his shoulders, even the very ones that's mocking him. He got their blood upon him, the weight of his, their sins and their blood upon his shoulders. And they can say these things to him, not knowing who he is, that he's the savior of the world. He come to take the sin out of the world. Come on now. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They couldn't possibly know because if they knew they wouldn't do this, they wouldn't do this. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Jesus, these is a mixture of folk. These is. Jewish people, Hebrew folks, come on. And you got the Romans that are there. The soldiers are present. Come on. But it's humanity that's at stake. And Jesus kept the course because he understood that his life was being given for humanity. And if he would have succumbed to the obscenities that the people were uh, saying, Come on, then everything he did up to that point would have been for naught. It would have been for nothing. And so Jesus, he didn't even sweat it. <laughs> he didn't sweat the small stuff. That's small in his eyes, amen. In our eyes, it may not seem small. In our eyes, it may be like, Sister Johnny, you're not understanding. If she say one more thing, if he say one more thing, if they do one more thing, if these kids say one more thing, if my husband say one more thing, if my wife say one more thing, if my mama, my daddy say one more thing, my aunts, my uncle, if my friend, come on now, if my neighbor do one more thing, you got to remember, I'm a child of God. And a lot of times we do say that and we get kind of caught up in life because life will throw, throw us a curveball and we'll just be in life and we dealing with all kind of stuff and we trying to get the, the, the money to pay these bills and keep or sustain our household and sustain us. Sometimes we get lost in that and we forget and we just say, yeah, I'm a child, I'm a child of God, but I want you to slow down and stop a minute and think about that. When you say I'm a child of God, what does that mean? What weight? Does that hold? I'm a son. I am a daughter of the most high God. You see what I'm saying? And if you really understood what that meant, when, when you're at work and when you had that second, cause you, I understand you had that second where you, that split second where you may be going into the bathroom or into your car repenting. Cause you don't went off. I want you to think about who you are. You're a child of the most high God. You are the son and daughter of God. And for them to say that to you, and don't get me wrong. All of us are God's children. God has different kids and some of them is, is off the chain, but they still his. That's just like your parent. I was explaining this to someone. That's just like your parent, right? And you may have like, you know, different kids, multiple children. All those kids have different personalities and you love them all, but each child you have to address differently because of their personality. And some kids is just off the chain, hard headed. I mean, adult children too. 
you know, young children, adult children, teenagers, whatever, especially teenagers, you know how it is when you go through the teenage years. But it's like, are you mine? Are you my child? I didn't raise you like this. What is going on? Right. But they still yours. Even as an adult, your child might be, you know, doing a lot that most people in the community are not understanding and don't like at all. But that doesn't negate the fact that that's your child. That's still your child at the end of the day. You cannot say that's not your child. So God has all the all the people here on earth, regardless of their makeup, regardless of what they do, and regardless of the choices that they make, they are God's children. And God has to deal with some of his kids very harshly. But they're still his. And it's just like when you have your children, it's like, yeah, my child messed up. And yeah, that wasn't right. But don't mess with them. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, they still yours. And you still love them. And yeah, what they did was wrong. But they mine. And so Jesus understood that. So he's like, you know what, Father? I know how you feel about me because I'm yours. And, and these are yours as well. But just forgive them because they don't know. They don't know. They don't know why I'm, I'm here. They don't know why I'm on this cross. They don't know. But they will know. Amen. Let me keep going because I got excited. So let me uh, go to 35. It says, now the people stood by watching, even the rulers ridiculed. So you got the high and the low. You got the, the rulers, the leaders, and you got the, the, com the people in the community. You got criminals. You got people from all walks of life that's ridiculing Jesus. Okay. Let me skip down to 37. It says, and sarcastically saying, if you are ready, are really the king of the Jews, save yourself from death. Now, there was also an inscription above him. This is the king of the Jews. That's like, oh, this is the king of the Jews. Look at him. He on the cross. Like, he can't get himself down. Like they're mocking him, right? But this is what I want to get to, the criminals. Isn't it interesting that one of the criminals spoke up and said, look, we deserve what we're getting. This, this man haven't done anything. But the thing that really stood out was right here in verse 39 it says one of the criminals who had been hanged on the cross beside him kept hurling abuse at him saying are you not the Christ save yourself and us from death 40 this is the key this is the verse right here 40 but the other one rebuked him saying do you not even fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation you're like wait a minute now we both getting ready to die Okay. But are you so caught up in your own self and mess that you can't even recognize God? What's wrong with you? Now, this is another criminal that checked another criminal. I had to say it like that. I'm sorry. But he did. Jesus didn't even respond. The other criminal responded for him and said, wait a minute. Do you not have no fear for God? Like we're getting ready to die. We deserve to be up here but even though we're getting ready to die you can't recognize who this is how dare you so then he turns to jesus this is this is powerful i'm gonna I'm really break this down he says we are suffering justly because we are getting what we deserve for what we have done but this man has done nothing wrong and he was saying jesus Please remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, I assure you and most solemnly say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Now, it's interesting that he didn't say to them. He said to you. Now, yes, Jesus got compassion. And yes, Jesus is praying. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Come on now. He's praying for them because they have no understanding. They don't know. But now you got these two criminals. They facing death immediately okay now the other ones you know they're gonna eventually die and they did but it wasn't immediately it wasn't getting ready to happen soon but them that were hanging on the cross were facing immediate death they were getting ready to die and 
their soul was going to go somewhere. Come on, y'all. Now, I did a whole series last year on the soul. Your soul has got to go somewhere. The question is, where is it going to go? Are your, is your soul going to live for eternity in the presence of God? Now, I know we live in a day and time where people are like, you know, they, they believe in so many different things. And that's, uh, hey, I'm not going to get on anybody about what they believe in because it's a free country, free world. You believe in what you want to believe in. But as for me and my household, we going to believe in the Lord. We going to trust in the Lord. We, we believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the great I am, the most high God. Okay, that's who we rolling with. That's who I'm rolling with. So for me, do I know where my soul is going? My soul is going to be in the presence of the Lord, of the most high God, the, the great I am, the I am, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I'm going to be in the presence of that God forever. Now, there, the soul has to go somewhere because our bodies are just physical shells that house our spirit and our soul. Our soul has to live on. Where is that going to be? Now, the criminal, he committed some crimes. This is so deep because he's committed some crimes. We don't know the life he's lived. And apparently, it didn't matter because Jesus said, uh, surely, like, let me tell you something. You're going to be with me in paradise. He didn't say anything about the other guy. The question is, where is he? Where did he go? Where did he go? So why? What? What's your point, Sister Johnny? Here's my point. When you're at work, when you're, uh, you know, in a business meeting, or you're dealing with clients, or you're at school, or you're dealing with your friends, or you're in a relationship and you're dealing with some stuff, let me tell you something. Before you go off, Remember, you a child of God. Remember, you a child of God. It ain't going to be easy because it's not even easy for me. I'm not even going to tell that. Finna, I love that. I'm not going to tell that. But let me tell you something. I try my hardest. I purpose within myself to say, okay, Johnny, this person has said something real foul to me. But if I respond in that same spirit, Okay, this is not going to be a good outcome. And secondly, I'm a child of God. I have to exercise the characteristics of love and patience and all these things. Because I, if I say that I'm a child of God, then I have to, it looks like something. I have to stand for something and resist Satan, resist what I feel like doing, right? And it doesn't come overnight. It comes with practice. You know, anything that you you want to perfect, you have to practice, you have to exercise that you have to, you have to work on it every day. Okay. So you have to say, you know what? I'm a child of God. And they obviously don't know that. <laughs> or they have no comprehension of what that really means. Cause I had to really figure out what that really means. And, um, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. And letting it go doesn't mean culturally speaking, that don't mean you are weak or uh, I'm just saying this because it's what people say. That doesn't mean that you're weak. It just means, you know what? I'm choosing to let it go. I'm going to let it go so I can grow because it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's too much at stake. When people respond in anger, it's too many things that can happen. So whatever's going on at work, whatever's going on in your home, whatever's going on with your children, whatever's going on in your relationships, let me tell you something. Even for me, this word is for me too. I'm learning to really know who I am, that I am a child of the most high God. I am a child of God. And if I be a child of God, who's created me, who's given me the breath of life, who's given me the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the Lord lives and resides inside of me, then I have an obligation to safeguard that and not allow someone to take me out of character because they don't have any power over me. They don't understand who I am in God and they don't understand who they are as God's children. They haven't come into the knowledge of the truth yet. So I have to pray for them. And I have to remember that in the midst of all of this, just as Jesus was in the midst of all of that, he prayed. And I'm sure 
it wasn't easy. So be encouraged on today. You know, if you got to step away from your desk, step, step away from your the factory, step away from your office, step away from the building, wherever you're at, step away, step away and then pray. God help me. Not necessarily Lord touch them, Lord, because I'm Lord, help me, help me not to take offense to what they said and what they're doing. Help me, Lord God, to stay in the right mindset and the right spirit. Amen. I hope this word was encouraging to you. Be encouraged and know that you are a child of God. And when this life is over, you, your soul is going to stand in the presence of God. And you don't have to worry about anything. Okay. Be encouraged. Continue to pray for those that are still in darkness that hasn't uh, come into the knowledge of the truth. And continue to pray for yourself because we always want to pray for everybody else but we need prayer amen so be encouraged visit me at www.sisterjohnny.com so you can catch up on some of the previous shows god bless everybody this is in the mix